Welcome to Women at Halftime podcast, but not just for women, for you men too. If you're at mid-career or the halftime of life, our inspirational topics are not only fun, but also meant to help you maximize and write your next chapter. Right here with me, Deborah Johnson. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so excited to have a guest today, uh, Linda Rendelman. Uh, we've been trying to connect here, Linda. Thank you for being with us today. It's just... Oh, absolutely. Thank you for yeah. inviting me, for sure. It, it's an absolute pleasure. Mm-hmm. And I met Linda a little while ago from in one of our... Uh, chapter meetings, our NSA, our National Speaking Association, and I knew some of the things that you had done, but having recently gotten back from South Africa, I was especially interested in some of the uh, uh, things that you have done in Kenya, so we're going to talk about that and actually the the emphasis where you're going now, and Linda, uh, you, you will see her bio in the article enclosed, she's got a lot of credits. Um, and, uh, of course she's been interviewed, you know, have these great interviews as well and, and three books. And so you've had a lot of credits, but I come from the arts. A lot of people had a lot of credits, but what I'm interested in is the journey and what you're doing now. And that's most important because people, people, a lot of people in, especially in that field, I call them has-beens. They keep relying on their, on their awards. And that's not you at all. That is not you. So Linda, tell us, um, just in a little nutshell, um, what drives you most of all right now? And then I want to get into a little bit of your background, because you've had quite the background. You've had to overcome a lot of things in your life, including cancer. So I, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But where are you headed right now? Well, I am headed where I've always been headed for many, many years, and mm-hmm. that is empowering women mm-hmm. and and really, really getting to the point where we can find our most authentic selves. Mm. And why we've done that through the Women Like Us Foundation in Africa. And of course, I, I love to be able to talk about the Women Like Us Center there. And then also in, in the coaching that I started doing about a year ago. And so really, truly, Deborah, honestly, it's my legacy because I've done it for so long and it still is, I'm so passionate about working with women. And, and anyway, we'll, we'll get into some other stuff as to why I'm doing the coaching now, I'm sure, but, but it all started back with the Women Like Us Foundation. That's, and that's amazing that you've started this foundation. And what I'd like to know is, I mean, you started this foundation in Kenya. <laughs> what, why Kenya? And uh, and what is this Women Like Us Foundation all about? Wow, yeah. Thanks for letting me share all of this. <laughs> and I'll try not to be too long because it's, it's been a long journey, quite honestly. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So the foundation is 22 years old. And um, I actually I actually started, I, again, I'm back to always, always about women and empowering women and I always try to actually find a different word than empower, but I always come back to that word. So we get it, though. We use it. We right. Use it. Uh, but yeah, and so um, years and years ago, I mean, I'm talking back in the 80s, 1980s. Um, we were, we are actually not 1980s, sorry. <laughs> Last 1900, so 2019, yes. Um, uh, I started um, a magazine. Um, we were, it was it was years and years ago and it was something that people were just not doing. They weren't doing magazines for women unless it was actually somebody very famous. And, you know, we had better homes and gardens back then and we had red book and we had all of these things telling stories about women, but a friend of mine and I, she was a TV journalist and I, I was a speech teacher actually. That's what I got my bachelor's degree in. And so she and I decided that we were going to create um, a magazine that was just for women in the city of Indianapolis, which is where I'm from and where I lived for many, many years. And so we got very, very excited into doing that. And that's really when I first started working with empowering women. And it was we ended up with a television show. 
We ended up with a radio show. I mean, it was really so much fun. And and like you, having the background of, of speaking, that was something that was uh, that was very, very cool for me to do. And I, I was very passionate about that. Fast forward, um, I, I, I ended up starting a company called Business Women Connect. And it was a membership company and we met once a month and you can kind of get some networking, a whole big networking thing when really truly there wasn't a lot of that uh, at the time. But so that grew, that grew along. And so now as I'm going, I'm going down the line here and you know, in my brain, it was called Business Women Connect, as I said, and in, in my brain, I kept, there was something in the back of my brain that kept saying, Linda, you need a charity. You, you're really, I really think that's where you should be, not necessarily in, in the corporate, but, but a charity. And so I did. And so in the early 2000s, I decided that I was going to change my, my business from Business Women Connect to a charity. So in the meantime, I started, I actually, well, actually, I forgot this part. I started at um, Business Women Connect. I sent, I actually created a Business Women Connect uh, charity. And then what happened after that is when I was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't even really get started with that charity and everything stopped. I was actually at the time also doing a television show on Fox every Sunday morning. And that was fun too. And I had all these great women guests on there, just like what you're doing right now. Well, <laughs> I love it. Great, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Get to meet lots of women and it's, it's just so much fun. Uh, uh, but anyway, and so then I did, I was, I was diagnosed. So all of that had to stop. Um, I'm fine now. That was literally 20 years ago now. So all good, all good here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And so, so um, when, I was in bed all the time and I was going through my my chemo and all of the things that I had to had to take care of. Um, I had just decided that I wanted to actually write a book and being sick, it was like, oh my gosh, will I ever be able to do this? I didn't know what the outcome would be. Uh, and so once I got well, I wrote my book and um, I named it Women Like Us. And a friend of mine said to me, Linda, don't you have a charity? Because my charity was on halt, but I still had it. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, Deborah, when I was sick, I knew I wasn't going to be able to have this charity that I had really dreamed about at this point. And what I did was I took my dream of having a charity and helping women. And I put it in this imaginary little box. And the box had had jewels all over it and it had feathers and it was so beautiful and it was all in my mind's eye. And I put it up at the top of my closet and I thought someday, someday I'm gonna be able to do this, but I have to get well right now. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, obviously I did get well. And then I wrote my first book and I named it Women Like Us. And we had in my in my city, we had this big event and and literally we were our, our meeting was on on the the front page of the local newspaper and all of these women showed up and we didn't even have enough seats. And it was I swear, I think a lot of it was that name, women like us. And they just showed up and it was fabulous. And what happened was at that point, then we took the Business Women Connect charity and renamed it to the Women Like Us Foundation. So that's how it got started. What a journey. That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's because you took, I love this little illustration of you putting that dream in a little box. Because a lot of people have those little boxes and they're never gonna open them. They may not even, it might not be jeweled, it might not, they might not even know where it's hidden, you know, inside. Mm -hmm but they've had a dream. And so, but you were able to fulfill that dream. And and why Kenya mm -hmm. that you have branched sure. out to Kenya? That's that's right. a question too. Right, isn't that crazy? I mean, a girl in Indiana? <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, I just went to Africa for the first time. I was I'm fascinated, it was wonderful, but I mean, that's that's kind of a reach for starting a foundation. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't start with Kenya. 
We started with the United States. Okay. And okay. the first, the first um, probably seven years, maybe we were in the United States, and our 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 mission that we wanted to make sure that was very very clear started getting really fuzzy, because we were working with women that were uh, that are fighting sex trafficking. Wow. We were working with women who were working with homeless women. We worked with all education. It was really very much about education, but, and we had chapters for a while and that was too crazy because that was too hard for us to handle. And so anyway, at the end of the day, after really, really learning where we should be in our world to help women, um, I had gone, I had already been to Kenya before with my daughter and it was a place that I always loved. And so we decided to start really, truly, it's kind of like, well, this is my charity. I can do what I want to do with it. I love Kenya. Let's go. Right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's brave. Yes. Yeah. Let's go halfway around the world and live there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Why not? We, did, we had three charities in, in Kenya that we supported. One was a, a school, uh, Nancy Noel School. Um, she's She has since passed on, sadly. Uh, and then we also worked with a woman who... Um, it's, it's called the Omaleka Home. And what she does is she uh, rescues girls that are victims of FGM in Africa. The, you know what that is, right, FGM? Why don't you explain that for our audience? Yeah, female genital mutilation. Okay. And, and that's very, very um, rampant over there. And what wow. that means is that these, these young girls, even 6, 7, 10, 12 years old, are are mutilated wow and, and i won't go into that, what that looks like and right. what it is but um so so and then and well, i can tell you why they do it though they do it because the the men in these tribes don't want the wife to they want to they want to wear they want to marry someone who is um actually that's happened to them because then they will not run away or have any kind of a sexual thing with anyone else, and it hmm. it keeps them down, you know, and not and not wow. able to do anything. Wow. So yeah, so that's really that's really really too bad. But and then the third one, uh, what is a um, it's called Victoria's Teens, and um, I got very very close with the warm, woman in Africa who who actually created that, uh, and eventually we started the Women Like Us Center. And here's why, because Anne and I started working together. Um, her mission was about keeping young teen girls in school. And we started working with her on that. And then we also realized that the women that are the mothers of these girls that we're trying to save should be an example for their daughters, not mm -hmm. just be in the background while we're trying to help them get through school. And so Anne and I started uh, just helping them learn how to sew in a, in a little house in the neighborhood. Uh, and we it started building and building, and we found wonderful donors to help us get it set. Um, this is a sad part coming, however, because uh, as Anne and I were working on all of that, and it, it was building, it was getting better between the girls and the mothers, and then um, I got a I got a message, and um, Anne had passed away. Mm. And as it turns out, she was without ever telling me she was a victim of domestic violence. Wow. And uh, the words are that it was her husband mm. that um, strangled her. Um, <clears throat> so that was really, really, really hard. I can still cry about it right now. Wow. It was so, so hard. So we took a little time and then we determined that, pardon me, <clears throat> that we are not going to stop. And in her name, we are going to continue. Uh, and so we named it the Women Like Us Center. And that is in Nakuru, Kenya. And now it's the only project that we have. We are completely, de completely dedicated to that. Mm. And it's amazing. It's just, it's just, it, it's again, it's always been around education. And it was, we have, 
now we have 160 women a week who take computer classes and we have have graduated hundreds of women from our sewing classes that we have and they get certifications and they have diplomas and we have great parties when they graduate and it's just so wonderful and we've impacted about a thousand women and their families in their community the, the women like us center is located right at the edge of the nakuru slums so it's easy for us to find them and well, quite honestly they find us but it's it's very 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 exciting and most recently and then i'll stop take a breath <laughs> and, and most recently in fact just this last january the women like us center is now its own cbo it's like a 501c3 in the united states but in kenya they call it a cbo and the with the directors and the teachers that we've trained are all really on their own and moving forward with it and i just i'm so so proud of them so so yeah so that's that's really it's it's really all about kenya for us yeah wow yeah. what a journey and you've gone through the journey of your <laughs> your changes and going through cancer and writing your book, but always having that passion for women. Mm -hmm. And then going into Kenya, you've always loved it. And with your daughter, you've been there. Mm -hmm. um, and then facing tragedy again with Anne and with, um, I mean, I can't imagine how difficult that would be, but you had all those tools and you had the network to be able to build that, which was pretty amazing mm -hmm. that, you know, what has happened. And what a wonderful thing if you can make women self-sufficient and to, uh, especially education, you know, education is huge. And uh, just visiting one school that we were in, in uh, South Africa and finding the women now, the, the women used to be held back completely because they were, they were just supposed to be at home and not mm -hmm. doing anything else. And mm -hmm. so, and they were needed at home, mm -hmm. but now they can get their education and they have, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you know, one thing I should add is that I don't know why I didn't say it now, but I'm saying it right now. <laughs> um, we have one of our directors is a psychologist. And not only do we teach them skills, mm -hmm. there, there's other things we do too, but our big ones are the computer and the sewing. Mm -hmm. um, and so they get one-on-one. -on -one. Our, our women are 90%, 90% of them are, are victims of domestic violence. They talk openly about rape. They are all definitely impoverished. And um, that's it's just so cool to be able to see them now. They're now they're earning wages because one of the things that we do not only are, is the is the computer thing working, and they're getting jobs like in grocery stores and things like that where they can actually they've got the the skills to do that. Um, and in the sewing now, they're doing um, they're making draperies for people. They are making. Uh, uniforms for the kids at school because all of the children in Kenya all wear uniforms you probably saw that right yes yeah. and, and well it keeps everything kind of similar so you don't know who's the poorest yes exactly yeah. exactly so they're really becoming and 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 it was such a perfect time to be able to have them kind of be on their own although we're still a part of it um, but but they're they've really been able to turn it into a business quite honestly. And again, all of our students, they get a wage now. It just makes me so happy. Ah, <laughs> oh, you know, it's like when you finally raise your kids and they're launched and you go, oh, you're all, you can, you can make it, you can make it in life because you've given them the tools, mm -hmm. you know, you've given them the education, you've given them the tools that they can actually work mm -hmm. and uh, how thrilling that is. Well, what are some of the biggest needs that they have right now that, that the center would have? Yeah, it's always money, number one. It's mm. always money because we need to pay the directors and we need to pay the teachers and, and we have a security guard that sleeps there at night so no one will, you know, steal the computers and right. and, <laughs> and all of that. So it, it always boils down to money. Uh, we did just recently start a new program that's for teenage moms because that's there too, obviously. And these girls uh, get either get raped or, or they, they, they bear a child um, and the, the school won't let them come back in. So we're also developing, our, our program is called Women Like Us Achieve. And so they're, they're learning about 
well, well they're getting skills that we already yes. have there for them, right. but also how to be, how to, how to have courage, how to have character, you know, how, how to really get strong girlfriend so that yes. you can have a strong life. And it, yes, economic stability is very, very important for us to, for them to get that, right. but also the inside part. And we actually have a, a friend of mine that's an amazing coach that lives in Japan and she's starting to do some coaching virtually with these girls too. So we're really excited about that. And that's so exciting because that's what COVID did for all of us is it, it opened up the minds so much for even more people to do virtual. There's so much you can do virtually, just so much. I mean, it's nice to be right with people too. That's very, very important. But there's other opportunities that, that we can, we can accept, access some of that, um, you know, those resources really internationally. That's wonderful. So, and with those young teen moms, they need to know how to be a mom too, maybe differently, uh, a little bit differently in raising their children and how to raise them to value education and value, you know, some of those skills. An example. And, An yeah, example. you, you, you can't just leave them, you know, because they've got these babies, these beautiful you know, new lives, and you don't want them going the same path as many of the others who have come out of that abuse and everything else. So, yeah, that's yes. And, and so, back to your question about what the needs are. Yes, uh, that that is something as well. Diapers. Mm. Um, we actually sewed. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. I think everyone is anymore. But um, it's the the sanitary towels they call them. Okay. So that they're, they're they're actually washable sanitary pads is what how we refer to them mm. so we uh we i think we made like i think we made like 300 of them wow and and so that that's a that's a good thing so so and we give them to the girls so that's mm. another thing you know so we can buy the fabric and certainly diapers for the babies all of that is all mm. of those kinds of means it's all on our website that's great. And I will make sure those links are there because what, I mean, would it be great to have some more organizations say, we would like to give to this. So we could, I don't know if you have patterns to even make some of those things and, you know, to be able to send those and uh, to be able mm -hmm. to provide for that. That's, that's a wonderful thing. So, and uh, you had put in your notes that there's some big news about the center that's changed, or is this the big news was that you're opening it up to the teens? Uh, well, the biggest news is that they're on their own now. Wow, That's, that is big news. <laughs> they are actually a licensed charity in Kenya. Uh. So the donations still come through right now anyway. They they come through the Women Like Us Foundation because we're in the United States. Mm -hmm. So people can get tax deductions if they right. go to us. Kenya, it's a different deal. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Good. We well, that's good to know. That, that what really is perfect for us is if we can get monthly donors so yes. that we can count on that money every single week. And that, that's on the website too. Right. That's most important because the one-time gifts are great, but the monthly donors, you know how much is going to come in and plus you can get more people involved. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just like political organizations. They want those little donors every month, <laughs> you know, yeah, to be able to totally. be behind. Yes, it's very much so. Yeah. Uh, with almost any organization. So, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, yeah de definitely. So, well, now you are, what's next? Because you were coaching, um, and, and, and I'll make sure all of these links for the foundation because it's so much a part of what you're doing, and I can just, I mean, I could just see, I love doing this on video as well uh, mm -hmm. because we can see the smile on your face and how excited you are with all of this. Um, that's so much fun. And what are the rewards and the fulfillment that you get from, I mean, we've, you've talked about a little bit of this just with your, and we could see on the smile of your face how rewarding it is for working with women and to see them launched on their own. And uh, are there any other things that go through your mind? Um, are we talking about in general or are we still on the foundation? Kind of, we're talking about in general now. I'm kind of merging into the women like us, what you're doing now, um, okay. because I think it's a lot of it is associated because mm -hmm. of the foundation that you've done um, and that you're a part of, still a part of, mm -hmm. is so much a part of the the core values are so much a part of what you're doing with coaching women and helping exactly. them maximize 
who they are with courage and with confidence Mm -hmm. and all of that. So Mm -hmm. that is where, you know, as you've really, you, you said what your main focus is now, as we started this, um, Mm -hmm. with coaching women, what are some of those rewards that you were finding in that and because you're here in the U.S., you're not in mm-hmm. Kenya, so right, right. Oh, you know what? One one other thing about Kenya, though, mm-hmm. is we for years and we, we've stopped sadly, actually. But we every year we would bring um, a lot of, of volunteers to the center, also, and to, uh, and even when we had the other projects in Kenya, that was that was amazing, and that was such a wonderful opportunity for all of us, including me, to be able to do that. Oh, exactly. Because there's nothing like being there. I mean, nothing. Those lights. You just you just had that happen. (laughs) Those are the yeah. It was amazing. It was just amazing. Um, If the flight wasn't so long, I'd go back sooner. But it is a long flight. (laughs) I mean, the travel, and especially now the travel's been a little challenging. But um, but it was it was an amazing trip. I mean, there's just when you experience, you know, being there and with the people, you were with the people more and and we were too, we were with a lot of people, but Mm -hmm. it was more of, you know, really seeing the countryside too. It was amazing, just amazing. So, um, so now you have turned to more coaching for women. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of making this little Mm -hmm. connection here. Mm -hmm. And, um, when you've done that, as you've, as you sort of focus there, what are some of those rewards and some of the emphasis Mm -hmm. that you're able, maybe that you can even apply from what you've had in Kenya, but you've Mm -hmm. always been pretty much, I would see you always has been, have been a coach pretty much because you've, you've done this all your whole life. I really have. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, No, I, well, first of all, I, I got, I, when we started realizing that the, the Women Like Us Center is going to be more on their own, right? So backing them up, but they know what they're doing. They're right. so smart. I'm so proud of them. Yes. Uh, but um, it, I, I thought about my own next next steps, next right. future, you know, because I'm, I'm still helping them, but it's not like I'm out raising money every single day or doing a lot of the, you know, 12 hour days anymore, which is nice. Right. Um, but, um, I, my, my graduate work is in counseling. Mm-hmm. And when I thought about what do I, what have I not done in my life yet that I really do want to do? And it was immediately coaching and counseling. That's, that's what it was. And I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. And I did get my master's years and years ago in counseling. So I've done some, some things that have, i kind of like, you know, got a little more education myself because it had been a while. But then I also got a master's uh, certificate in coaching as well. And I love it so much. I just love it. And I think the reason I love it so much, honestly, not only do I get to meet these great women, but it's very, very fulfilling to be able to help them steer where they want to go for their next chapter. And Deborah, you know, both and I, you, you and I are probably not exactly the same age, but as we, as women get from in the fifties on up into retirement, there's a lot to look at. There and is a lot to look at. Yes. A lot to look at. <laughs> and we just have so many great things that we can still do with our lives. And so really, truly, in fact, there was some research done that when you're right around 50, and if you haven't done what you'd really like to do in your life, a lot of times you never get there. Mm-hmm. So that's part of my mission to help to help women really look at what how do they want to spend the next 20 years or 30 years or whatever. And what does that look like? And how can I help them get there? Right. Because and and really it's just and it it it's just the way I am too. And I've always just gone after things and gone after things. And I know how to get that done. Right. And then the other thing is I'm starting to help women who also want to start a charity because I do have a huge background in that. Mm. So, so yeah, but it's just, it, I'm just really, really enjoying it a lot. That's mm. a specific skill. Um, mm. Yes. For starting a charity, actually that's, and that's really good for me to know because there are people 
that you run across, and, and there's a lot to it. There is, and not just a charity, but just like a nonprofit or like, you know, this a little bit different with some of those things with the foundation, mm -hmm. but it's, but it's very similar along the lines. And so uh, knowing what it takes, um, mm -hmm. just owning your own business is quite something too, you know, and, and yeah. be able to, but there's so many, I think at, um, because that's what drives me so much in my main mission at when they reach that halftime of life, officially halftime by the internet uh, is that definition is over the age of 40, which I think it's more about 45 ish, you know, something yeah, like, right. but the halftime of life. Um, but people are afraid. They're afraid to take another step. Um, they're afraid to go after what they've always wanted to do. It's a little bit more comfortable staying there, but they're feeling stuck. They're feeling mm -hmm. in that roundabout, and I'm writing quite a bit about that. They're just feeling this little spinning, and, and what is next? And so you took that next step of what is what have I not done that I really want to do? And you gotta do some soul searching for that and figure out mm -hmm. really you know, yeah. what it is. And what I love, Linda, is that you have called upon a lot of your experience. You have so much experience. Mm -hmm. Your experience is entirely different than mine, but you've had got this counseling degree, you've got this, you know, you understand uh, a lot of the, the process of coaching mm -hmm. and uh, that, and not only coaching, but being able to get people, you know, really started in an organization or started of, you know, how you set up the whole business and how you set up the whole foundation or set up the whole charity, everything. You're able to give them those tools. And that's very, very exciting that you were able to do. So you, you know, faced your fears. That, thank you. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, the women that I work with um, are really not as so close to 50 as they are closer to 70, quite honestly. Wow. And okay. it's just so cool. And they're, they're just like, you know, what am I going to do next? You know, what, you know, I, I, I really want to, I want to make something of my life still. Hmm. And, and so, um, so yeah, it's hmm. just very rewarding. It really is. So, and it's I'm right there with them. See? So, yeah, yeah. It's interesting you say that because, you know, I do some, you know, a lot of these Facebook lives and live streams and, and I find a lot of people that have time to watch this are in that stage, 55, 65, or even above. And mm -hmm. they are the ones that are, are watching that are, especially when there's the messaging of, you know, what next. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting that way, you know, you can, because mm -hmm. you think, well, there may, there may be these 45 to 55s, but they're not as, they're looking but they're not pursuing it as much. That is, that's a really interesting. Well, what is the goal um, that you really feel like you can, part one of those goals is that you can help people, you know, live their happiest lives, but what are they really looking for, do you think? Are they looking mm -hmm. for significance? Are they looking for something else to do? They're looking to not mm -hmm. be bored. What are, in your experience, um, some of these women, or maybe getting out of a situation that's not healthy, mm -hmm. Uh, what are you finding in your work mm -hmm. that um, is one of those pain points that they're really looking for at this at this point? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we have to first start with getting clarity mm -hmm. about the past. Okay. Because, you know, we all do this, but we can also reframe our lives right. and, and really have a happier space that we can live in. Right. So that's so we can, we do a lot of the personal stuff because they may not even quite know what they want to do. In fact, that's that's the case a lot. Almost every one of them, uh, of these wonderful women that I'm able to be with, uh, we we really we just start. What is it that works? You know, what is it? What have you thought? What was your purpose? What what was your passion when you were younger? And that might be gone now. Doesn't yes. mean to stay the same at all. But it really is <clears throat> authenticity. And it's it's having a having a happy life and and feeling like like they have a chance to live their life on their own terms. And I think that's you know we're still fighting that as women. We right. really are in so many right. ways, especially recently. So right, right, yeah. yes, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, so so it's really a, a lot of that. And again, you know, we do mindfulness. 
We even know some, some with some people we do yoga. I mean, we don't do it together, but, but that is something that really helps them. So we go down that road. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's uh it's very, very personal. And I, I can do them. Uh, I, I work with them on different kinds of things, like maybe 10 sessions only, or I have, uh, I have women that stay with me for like even almost a year. And so, but it's really, really good. And uh, anyway, again, it's very fulfilling to me and, and um, they seem to feel like they're getting some good help. And so we're having a great time. That's, uh, and, oh. and that you love what you do. You know, that is, you know, that, that is so important at this stage, not only significance, because, you know, we recently um, said goodbye to our parents within, like within five years, both sets of, with my husband and I, both sets of our parents. And you realize, you know, after they're gone, there's, you know, we didn't know what to do with the stuff. So it was, we had to throw away a lot of stuff. So I just know our kids are going to just throw away a lot of the stuff. <laughs> they are. But what's going to last? What will last is your influence with people and mm-hmm. your impact on being able to move them ahead. And that's what you are doing, Linda. You are helping people. You're helping them reach to their past as well, which is which is really an important part, I think, of what you do. That's that's your counseling area that's really coming Mm -hmm. through that's very valuable and that's a Mm -hmm. i think that is an added element of what you do that Mm -hmm. uh, many of the coaching programs Mm -hmm. don't have because they don't have that counseling background they've Mm -hmm. they've got the programs and but to really piece for the people that really need to kind of delve deep in where they come from mm-hmm. um, it is very important, especially I, I can see that connection with Kenya too, with those mm-hmm. women that are coming for education that have been through abuse and they've been through all of they've been through. Well, it's, it, it's just sugar coated here in the U S a lot of that's happening here too. Completely. Yeah. yeah. So you are able to reach those women at, in a, a different sort of, uh, venue and space and, you know, a whole country, but yet some of those issues and the problems are just the same. That's why it's called women like us, yes. no matter where we are. Yeah. Yeah. We're all what, the same. I mean, what, what was it? I, I, I used to use this, uh, this saying a lot. Um, uh, our stories are different, but our passions are shared. Wow. No, yes. I think that pretty much says it. And yeah, so I hear um, you. Thank yes. you for seeing all that. Yeah, but, it's it's nice to, to connect those dots. So <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, wonderful. Well, Linda, um, again, uh, this has been such a pleasure because I know you've had, you know, you've been honored, you've been, you know, with, uh, you know, presidents and all of that sort of, you've had all of these honors. I'm going to put, put First those. Lady. <laughs> First lady. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So that's wonderful. Wonderful to be, you know, honored that way. But I think the biggest honor that I see in your life is that you are doing what you are so passionate about doing and very happy, you know, and, and people ask me sometimes, when are you going to quit work? I'm never going to quit. Are you kidding? Not until my kids put me in a home. (laughs) I love, yeah, I love doing what I'm doing as long as there's a couple people listening or whatever, but no, I just, I just do. And I think there's such a message for keeping going and especially our, the longevity, you know, I've written about that as well. There's so many of those studies and chances are, you know, we are going to live longer because of some of the medical advances and all of these things. And I know you've really come through with the cancer. And I know you recently had the COVID too. I mean, this is, yes. I mean, everybody's had it pretty much, you know, I'm not going to say that, but it's a lot of people, you know, um, so at this point, but, but it's, um, it's wonderful how we can be so fulfilled because that's, that's a health benefit too to love mm-hmm. doing what you're doing and to keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Well, any last words and then we'll kind of sign off. And this is so great. We're, you know, I'm just thinking, I, well, as you were speaking, I was thinking, you know, and, and we need to support one another. Mm. And I think we're getting better at that. 
but um, in one of my in one of my books, I wrote about that a lot. How how we were so we you know we were not not we were just looking for something for ourselves. The, right. You know, that's the whole ceiling deal, and and the fact that you know we had to compete so much against one another, like to get a job. Because, right. I mean, it's crazy. And so I think that's how all of that happened because we didn't have enough resources and we had kids to, at feed at home or, or whatever, you know. And so right. I, just, I just I just really I feel like in, in what we've done that we are supporting one another. And I really just hope that that continues on so many levels for women across the world that we yes. can do that. We, we right. don't have to be stingy. We don't have to have scarcity when it comes to who we are and, and what we want our lives to look like. We can support one another to help that to get done, you know? So. That is such a great sign off on that. And I know because you've developed a whole um, group of support around you. You've been a single mom pretty much part of the time too, and raising the th how many kids, three kids. And you've, been, and, and you've, you know, started these organizations and really brought people together. And when you work together um, and when you play together, you end up supporting each other. And uh, it, it's that's a wonderful, you know, having that, cl I, cl I call it a close circle. You know, you have your different circles of relationships and I've written about that, but it's, yeah. it's great to have those close relationships that you can trust and that you, you just know you can talk to people about certain things and those relationships uh, mm -hmm. are so, so important. So they are. They are. yeah. Well, yep. thank you again, Linda. This has been an absolute pleasure and I'm so glad we were able to connect. And oh, thank you, Deborah. <laughs> so really? much, so I much. Love, fun. I love your work also. I want to make sure I said that because I, I, you know, I, I looked at you and figured out what you do and I thought oh my gosh, we're kind of in the same in the same space so good for us yes and you know and it's funny because i i used women at halftime because it was so easy to brand um and mostly focused because more more women will listen and you know get your products and all of that but there are men that listen too and i bring on my husband once a month on these two which is oh, which is fun. really fun i drag him in and, yeah. you know we've been yeah. together for a very long time so that's that's really fun but but it is, my passion is to help people, men or women, mm -hmm. that I see so many not maximizing their skills, their resources, their experience, their uniqueness. It's what I've done in music for years, starting to teach at 13. Maximizing what you have. And that's mm -hmm. where I saw your experience, how you have maximized it mm -hmm. to be able to help and to do what you're doing now. And you have a really a unique little area of having that counseling within that too. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. gift for you to be able to share with others. So I appreciate you sharing it with us today. Absolutely. So, thank yes. you. Thank and you. I thank all of you listeners for listening another week. This is just so much fun for me. I love it. And you can always reach me a million places. Make sure you click into the article as I will give a lot of the information about Linda, our wonderful inter interview today and her, yeah, you know, how you can support her, or how you can look her up. And her bio will be on there as well. And you can reach me at any time. Get onto the weekly newsletter, which are the e-articles. I don't spam you, um, but they come out. I've had it for years. I don't know how many, at least 20. But uh, the awesome. goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter. Easy to sign up. Goalsforyourlife.com slash newsletter. Uh, Deborah Johnson speaker. Uh, DJ works music. People love the music. So, but you can find plenty of free resources there too. So thanks again for joining us. And I'll look forward to being with you then next time. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining us. It is because of our wonderful listeners like you that we keep going strong week after week. We'd love it if you'd share and follow us to not miss a single show and even write a review. You can also find all of our articles, products, and links at womenathalftime.com.